Kim Min Jae has been one of the best defenders in Europe this season, and he is signed for Bayern Munich for a record Asian fee. But how did we get here? Kim was born in Tangyang, which is a small city on the Korean south coast, and fell in love with football at an early age. Kim is from a sport-induced family, with both his parents being athletes in their day, while his brother was also a football player. At an early age, Kim was very dedicated to football, and would even get out of helping his family's sushi restaurant to get more hours of training in, and his talent was evident for all to see, and in 2011 got a call up for the South Korean under-17 team at the young age of 15. Despite this being the breakthrough for many young Korean players, it was a lot harder for Kim. He lived the other side of the country to where the national team played, and Kim's parents put a lot of hours into their sushi restaurant. This meant it was always going to be hard to give up time for Kim to go and play football, but his family supported him, and Kim's father actually had a solution, as he would combine dropping Kim off with a business trip to the East Sea, in which they would take their restaurant's fish transportation truck in order to make the journey. With Kim being so young, this gave him relative exposure around Korea, and more and more academies and schools were starting to know of his name. This led to him graduating elementary school and middle school around the country, which helped him get into the Suwon High School, which is a very established school across Korea, and has even produced international footballers such as Park Ji Sung. After he graduated in 2015, he went on to Yosai University in 2016. However, unlike other Asian footballers such as Karabatoma, Kim did not want to put up with education any longer and wanted out. So in his second year, he decided to quit, despite the university advising him not to. However, Kim believed in his abilities and actually joined semi-professional club Gwangju KHMP upon leaving university. And with KHMP, he actually played in the Korean Nations League, which is a third division in Korean football, starting from the middle of the 2016 season. Kim played 15 matches, leading his team to the playoffs. And when the season ended in late 2016, Kim got picked up by John Book Hyundai Motors, who were the best team in Korea at the time. With manager Choi Kang-hee expressing that he expected him to be a key player upon signing, which was a lot of expectation on the young man. And within only six months, Kim became a key player for Jam Bak, which led to him getting his first full call-up for the South Korean national team. And with consistent performance throughout the rest of the season, he helped Jam Bak win the K-League 1, which was his first professional league title, while also acclaiming the K-League Young Player of the Year award. He continued this momentum with another brilliant start to the season in 2018. And after a man the match display against rivals FC Seoul, the media and fans in Korea actually gave him the nickname the Monster, as Kim Min Jae was physically imposing central defender and known for his rough and tough style of play, which was very different to the technical style of play which has dominated Asian football in the last few decades. However, when Kim was on top of the world in Korea, it all started to change, as he suffered a fibular injury and was out for the rest of the season. This also meant he was out for the 2018 World Cup. Despite this, Kim had established himself as one of the most exciting and promising players in Korea. And at six foot three, was very different to a lot of the players around him. After winning the J League twice, it was time for him to move on, but Kim made a strange decision. The move was to transfer to Beijing Tsinghuao in China. Despite being linked to European sides like Watford, this was because Kim did not believe he was ready for Europe. Kim overall played very well for Beijing. With the Chinese league being more susceptible to European media, he was starting to get even more attention from European sides, especially when he hit his first controversy as in a YouTube video, he expressed dissatisfaction of his Beijing teammates and often felt that he was the only good player in defence. This led to Kim having to apologise to his teammates, but with Bridges already burned, it seemed like he could not recover from this and Beijing tried to let him go, with Jose Mourinho from Tottenham famously wanting to bring him in. However, Tottenham didn't want to pay more than 5 million euros for Kim, though it did not happen that summer. And with the global pandemic happening, it was very hard for Kim to leave China in 2020. However, Kim wouldn't have to wait that long to get his move. With just a year later in 2021, Turkish side Fenerbahce decided to pick him up with a fee of 3 million euros. Kim's performances for Fenerbahce were nothing short of astonishing. He also started to get attention around Europe as his performances in the Europa League were brilliant, despite Fenerbahce not being an overly competitive side. However, Kim had shown Europe just how good he was, showing his ability to pass out from the back and being physical in times of need. This helped him get into the Turkish League team of the season, which led to Kim being linked to many of the top European teams. Napoli, who needed a new centre-back as Kaladu Koulibaly departed for Chelsea, decided to spend 18 million euros on Kim and it was his first time to be in a top five league in Europe. Napoli have struggled for many years to make a real impact on the Serie A and had not won it since Diego Maradona left in 1991. But with manager Luciano Spalletti, they were definitely on the up. And with brilliant acquisitions that year, Napoli were having a rebuild and Kim seems to be one of the main men for them. If you like this content and want to see more, please like and 
subscribe, it really means a lot. Kim was thrown straight into the first team and on his home league debut, scored against Monza in a 4-0 victory. And the momentum didn't stop there as in his second month in Italy, he won Serie A Player of the Month for September 2022, which is a brilliant feat for a defender. With his electric start to the season, there was hype around Kim going into the 2022 World Cup as South Korea had a better squad than usual. Finally, Kim got to show the world what he could do and was fit for this tournament and played every single game. And he helped them beat Uruguay in the group, prizing the world and coming second to get to the knockout stage. Despite losing to Brazil, it was a brilliant achievement. With Napoli sitting top of Serie A when he left, he knew that when he came back from the World Cup, there was a job to do. And boy, did he do it. Napoli went on to have one of the seasons of their lifetime and won their first Scudetto since Maradona left. Every single one of them players was legends and Kim was an integral part of Napoli's victory. Being named Serie A's best defender of the season and only his first season was bound to strung up some interest. And the rumours were going into this year that there was a lot of big teams in for him, looking for a centre-back of his quality and stature. And after weeks of speculation, Kim Min Jae finally has his new destination, that being the German champions Bayern Munich, who have paid his 50 million euro release clause from Napoli. This would be the highest transfer out of any Asian player in the history of football. So Kim Min Jae is really putting his name up there. Kim Min Jae is a perfect example of trusting in yourself and your abilities to get the best results in your career. He always believed himself, he didn't do things the traditional and conventional way of Korean players. In the end, he looks to be the biggest and most relevant Korean player of all time, alongside Hyunmin Son. So this is how we got to this point. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you want any other players, let me know. This one was kind of hard. My pronunciation was uh, struggled a bit with the names of the places, but you know, I tried my best. They're not going to be perfect, but that's how it is. Um, thank you guys for watching.